The altar stands before you, flecked with moss and the cracks of age. An ant crawls across the surface, dipping in and out of the inscription that's engraved on the rock. In honor of Ralik, first of the gods and patron of humanity. As your prayer drifts away on the breeze, you feel the world around you shift. You open your eyes to a courtyard with wooden targets and practice posts scattered about. And there before you stands Ralik, a twisted old man struggling to heft his own sword. With difficulty, he lifts it high, cutting down towards one of the targets, but he misses completely. His sword clangs against the cobbles, slipping out of his hands and skittering towards you. Cursing loudly, he crawls towards you, searching hands running over the stone. He's blind. He hears you as you step forward and lets out a cackle. One of the others sent you, eh? <laughs> sent you to pester a poor man that has lost his sight? <laughs> He spits, sending a brown glob sailing dangerously close to your boot. Of course you do. I have needs, too. I'll meet yours if you meet mine. I want your eyes. After all, what is a warrior without his sight? Give me yours. I assure you, they will be put to good use in the war against the Void. The altar stands before you, flecked with moss, in honor of Ralik, first of...
A black ring captain stands before you. She looks remarkably ordinary, you think, as far as black ring go. But then you hear a voice inside your head. Tell me who you are, or I will kill you. And do not doubt me, for I tell the truth. Her expression does not change. She cannot read your mind, but you can read her face, and you see she grows impatient. Tell me who you are, or I will kill you. Then they may live, for now, that they may kill the divine pigs, and kill the godwoke, and kill them all, and then perhaps they die and rise again. She says nothing. She looks remarkably ordinary, you think, for Black Ring. But then you hear a voice in your own head. You serve the God King now, so kill the Divine Order pigs and kill the God Woken. Go kill them all. Go serve the King. Every weapon in my stock has spilled blood in honor of the God King. If you can't do the same, then the fault lies with you. What'll it be, Thrall? A bow? A few? Because the God King is our true Lord and Savior. He's going to right the wrongs of the Seven. Not that I'd expect some bloody Thrall to understand. An undead reaver lifts a clay goblet of wine and drinks deep. Only the wine trickles out through a hole in his side a moment later. He glances at you with a shrug.
force of habit. Life will taste good again, once the God King's victory is sealed. I don't need confidence. I have faith. The God King restores the injured, resurrects the fallen. I lay dead and forgotten until he brought me back. He rewards the loyal. The Reaver utters a dry cluck of disapproval from the desiccated remains of his throat. Your mistress should have enlightened you, Thrall. The God King is the true king. The so-called Seven Gods betrayed him and cast him down. Now it's time for him to rise again. He looks you in the eyes, raises the palm of his hand towards you. Serpent-like coils writhe beneath the skin. The skin blackens. Noxious black smoke pours from him. Into your mouth, your tongue turns dry, then rough, almost scaly, and you feel your source, unsettled, as if attracted to the man's black eyes. As the black smoke snake takes over your tongue, you feel yourself slipping away. You see a vision, an army of the undead, risen to turn the world to a lifeless waste, at its head, a god king. The smoke snake returns to its master. Your mouth returns to normal, and with a sibilant hiss, the alchemist begins to laugh. <laughs> he tips his temple in salute. For a moment, a black smoke snake coils around his fist, and then is gone.
see him death. A new world is coming. The dreamer's eyes have rolled over white. His fingers twitch as you near. A cold presence suddenly seizes you. Your breath shortens and a voice enters your mind, probing. Red Prince, the prey that my master seeks, God-woken. The cold presence ebbs away. You take a deep breath. The voice offers parting words. Very well. Go, in service of the God King. The dreamer's eyes do not see. His mind is elsewhere, locked in a dark rapture as he torments the Magister. All that you desire shall be yours if you follow the God King. Life shall be restored. Loved ones returned to you. Death will become a thing of the past. Your enemies shall be cast down. The wrongs of the Seven shall be put right, thanks to the God King. Obey him. The Honor. Magister cowers, oblivious to you. The Dreamer is twisting her own mind into a... They're crawling. They're crawling under my skin. Get them out! Magisters. Not what they signed up for, I bet.
What's on your mind, darling? And I remember saying I'd probably never tell you. Then again, why not? I suppose some stories were always meant to be told. So, here goes. No, hang on. She retrieves a small flask from her backpack, uncorks it, and takes a big swig. Tears stream from her eyes as she offers you the flask. They're tears of joy, I assure you. Here, have some joy. You drink. It burns. Soon the tears run down your cheeks as well. <laughs> Not bad, is it? So good it has us crying like babies. Now then, the epic of The Master and the Scar. Sounds like a melodramatic opera. There was, of course, some singing involved. It began when I woke in the dark room. He removed my blindfold and still I did not see. He himself was darker than any shadow, but I could hear him, hear him give orders to another. Stingtail, how he came to regret the actions he performed that day. The master bid the dream a dream, and so he did. He sat there. I could feel his hands upon my cheeks. He trembled, as if in pain. I didn't know what was going on until quite suddenly his right hand became a flame i screamed as he traced the design of the scar into my searing flesh but i could not move not an inch and all the while the master looked on in darkest silence In that case, I should be able to lift mountains by now. So, once the scarring was over, and the pain began to fade, the training began. With words, whistles, snaps of the fingers even, the master could make me obey his every command. Young, strong, smart. You know I don't exactly lack in qualities. Didn't take him long to train me in the arts of stealth, subterfuge, and assassination. It shakes me little now, all too little. But that first time, that first real kill? It was such stuff as nightmares are made on. I had now lived in the dark for what might as well have been years. I was in a wood, but the trees there were sick. Grey, leafless hydra sticking out of ash and earth. There were no stars that night. She sat, shivering beside a fire. I was nervous. I, I had to chase her. My hand hated itself, tried to resist, but there is no resisting the master's song. My stabs weren't as mercifully exact as they should have been. I had to bring down the needle again and again as her screams flooded the forest with terror. When it was done, I crawled back to the master, broken, crept back into the box, and through its cold black lid, he told me I had done well. Next time, I do better. <laughs> you understand me completely. With the needle, I'll kill him. And with the needle, I'll strike his name from my skin. The bastard will be master no longer. The very best. She cocks her head ever so slightly and eyes you as innocently as a kitten. Why? Don't tell me you disagree. Thank you. I quite agree, and I'm sure I'll have mercy on you when I'm a goddess. You, but a mortal at my feet. In all seriousness, though, the prospect both tickles and terrifies me. I mean divinity will it be a blessing or a burden 
Would we be truly omnipotent, or merely the servants of an unruly universe, as desperate for control as we are now? And then there's the question that makes me shiver most of all. Would we still be ourselves? Would I remain Sibyl, or would my mortal soul die upon gaining divine immortality? Take the plunge and don't look back, huh? As good a plan as any, I presume. She sighs and closes her eyes, then smiles her easy smile. Such a silly game we play, to be a god. It's quite wasted on mortals, if you ask me. We are all of us too blemished to become immaculate. Good fight. Statues coming to life? A voice that is not your own rises within your skull. You are no child of Duna. Leave now, or face his wrath. A voice that is not your own rises within your skull. Enter freely, child of Duna, but bring none of foreign blood. They are not welcome.
There's no time to waste. And you're back! Now get up on my head where you belong. Wait, what's this? There's a note in here. Good to have you home, Fran. And don't go running off on me again. With great armored fists, the Knight of Duna pounds his own helmet rhythmically. The helmet has buckled inwards in places. Rivulets of blood trickle from beneath the visor. <laughs> Come, hear my joke. What is it that I guard? The Knight rams his fists into his helmet. The metal groans inwards. Surely none could survive such pressure. And yet... There is nothing sacred here. There never was. He showed me. It's all a joke. There's nothing to guard. Only lies. You'll see for yourself once you're dead. Enough words. Show me your steel.
The spirit of a dwarven knight acknowledges you with a solemn nod. Beware of this island, Godwoken. I fear there is nothing sacred here, only madness and death. The Sallow Man has seen to that. I have failed the gods. The only thing left for me now is nothingness. Please, Godwoken, consume my spirit. End my shame. The Black Ring came and sacked the temple. The one that leads them, the Sallow Man, he cursed me. A curse of madness and terrible visions. The spirit averts his gaze with a shiver. I will not say it. It would be blasphemy to even utter the words. The Sallow Man is a trickster, a deviant. They must have been lies that he concocted. They must be! There's little I can do to help you. It's the altars that have that power. Bow to the altar of Duna, and to those of the others also. If you are worthy, they will show you the way. I... I was not worthy. I failed the gods twice over now. All I deserve is nothingness. I... I was not worthy. I betrayed my own nature. I made a pact with a demon, so I would triumph over all others in the council. But the gods saw through my rules, and I was rejected. I begged them to let me serve here on the island to pay penance. They should have cast me into the sea instead. The sallow man proved I am still weak at heart. Please, I failed my duty and let myself be corrupted. Now I'm just a potential weapon to be used against you. Grant me oblivion. I beg you. The spirit offers a stoic nod, accepting his fate. Thank you. Look to the altars for guidance. onto the face of the altar is a dedication in honor of Duna, patron of the dwarves. Long may their mountain halls stand as a testament to him. Hard stone melts into cool water at your touch. Before you stretches a lake, or rather a mire. The waters are fetid and rotten, the air filled with choking miasma. Through the dense fog you hear a voice. Duna, god of dwarves, gasps. Please, cleanse this place. Let me breathe. The miasma clears as the power of your blessing skips across the surface. You look down to see your face gazing back at you, reflected in now crystalline water. High above your reflection, the full moon stands vigil. You step back from the altar, the vision fading before you. As you leave, you notice a lunar rune has appeared, carved into the rock. Carved onto the face of the altar in honor of Duna.
Looks like those black ring made a lethal enemy. You approach an undead, standing proud at the lip of a broken bridge. Understandably fearless of the fatal drop, she gazes into the lava sputtering below. Turning to you, she motions to the black ring corpses at her feet. Good riddance to bad rubbish, eh? Only thing I like less than black ring are trolls. Godwoken, are you? I thought so. I see it on you like an aura. I see such things, for I am the Watcher. And I seek such things, for I am a Seeker. I wasn't always as you see me now. But I swore an oath. This oath I defended to my grave. And I will continue to defend it until such time as the gods themselves deem it fit to end my vigil. I am one of the original Seekers. We swore to be Knights of the Council, Guardians of God Woken, and Defenders of Divinity. Together, we failed. But still, I try. Alone. Unless... The Knight of Duna has been cursed. Void runs through his veins where Source once flowed. I am sworn to protect the Council and all within it, but that same oath renders me unable to lift a blade against him. Release the Knight's good spirit from his corrupted shell, Godwoken. Do this, and I will gift you with the last standard of the original Seekers. If you seek ascension, it could help you greatly in the trials along the way. Why, how marvelous. I knew your Godwoken spirit was strong. Please accept this with my thanks, and the thanks of all those I served alongside. The blessings of the original Seekers upon you. She hands you a small yet heavy trinket, crafted of tarnished metal. Though cold, it feels comforting to the touch, like a worry stone or a familiar childhood toy. There is another one ahead of you who I consider more fitting for ascension. But still, go in peace, Godwoken.
The bunny gives you a dazed look, like he's not all there. Yeah, wow, what a shock, yeah. Huh, what? Oh, hi, so, yeah, hey, here's the thing. Don't get too close to the sticky owl thing with the shape thing near the door. Thing's dangerous, what a shock, uh, bye. Interesting. It may still be in working order. Don't budge!